In this quick tutorial, I'll show you how to solve minimization problems via the simplex method using the theorem of duality. The question reads, given the objective function and constraints, find the optimal minimum value. Notice that they've given us our objective function, where w is equal to the expression on the right. They've also given us the constraints, and y1 to y3 need to be positive. Now just to give you a graphical representation of what we're doing, normally when we want to find the maximum or the maximum optimal value, we find the points of intersection graphically and then substitute those points into the objective function to see which one gets us the highest value. This time on the other hand, if we were to solve this graphically, we would substitute those points into the objective function and see which one gives us the lowest value. Also bear in mind that these are just examples and they do not correlate to this function. What you want to do to tackle a problem like this where you find the minimum rather than the maximum is first write your constraints and your objective function as an augmented matrix. Without including w, without including slack variables, just write them as they are. So I'll start with this constraint. I'll write down 3, 3, 4, and 24. So this column's for y1, y2, y3, and my constants. And then for this one, we'll write down 5, 1, 3, 27. And for my objective function, I have 25, 12, 27, and no constant, zero. Once you've done this, you want to transpose this matrix. In other words, the rows become the columns and the columns become the rows. Take for example row one, we have three, three, four, and 24. That becomes our first column, three, three, four, and 24. Similarly over here, this becomes five, one, three, and 27. And over here, 25, 12, 27, and 0. Also keep in mind that this column no longer represents y sub 1. This is x sub 1, x sub 2, and our constant. So to convert this into a constraint, we'll write down 3 x sub 1 plus 5 x sub 2, and that needs to be less than or equal to 25. Similarly for that one, 3 x sub 1 plus x sub 2, is less than or equal to 12. For our next row, 4x sub 1 plus 3x sub 2 must be less than or equal to 27. And our new objective function is 24x sub 1 plus 27x sub 2 is equal to z. We're no longer using w. Now the reason why this works is because of the theory of duality, which states that the objective function w, remember what we had, our w, of a minimization linear programming problem takes on a minimum value if and only if the objective function z, which we wrote right here, takes on a maximum value. The maximum value of z equals the minimum value of w. So because we transpose this matrix, if I now perform the simplex method for this problem where we have the, the objective function and the inequalities which serve as our constraints, if I use the simplex method here and find the maximum technically, that maximum will serve as my minimum. Interesting. So with that being said, I'll need to convert these three inequalities into equations and that can be done by introducing slack variables. So we'll introduce a slack variable for each one of these. For the first one, I'll write down 4x sub 1 plus 3x sub 2 plus my first slack variable and that's equal to 27. For this one, 3x sub 1 plus x sub 2 plus my second slack variable is equal to 12. For this one, we have 3x sub 1 plus 5x sub 2. My third slack variable is equal to 25. Notice that by introducing these, my inequalities have become equations. And the objective function always needs to be written at the end. So we have 24x1 plus 27x2. I'll take these two terms over to the right side so that the left side is equal to zero. If I move those terms over to the right side, they become negative. So we have negative 24x sub 1 minus 27x sub 2. You don't need a slack variable because it's already an equation. Plus z is equal to zero. Now that we have four equations, I need to change this into an augmented matrix. And by that, we won't include the variables. The variables will serve as the columns. So this is our initial simplex tableau, and we need to maximize this. Just like before in our previous videos about simplex method, 
we look for the most negative number. The most negative number is negative 27. That's our negative indicator. This will serve as our pivot column and we'll take the constant and divide it by that number, the number in that row. 27 divided by 3 gives us a quotient of 9. So this column's for quotients, that's 9. 12 divided by 1 is 12. 25 divided by 5 is 5. And we don't worry about this one. The smallest number here is 5, therefore this 5 is our pivot number. So row 3 will remain the way it is, but we need to make this 1, 3, and negative 27 into zeros using row matrix operations. Let's go ahead and do that. We can start with row 1. To make this 3 into a 0, I can multiply all of row 1 by 5 and all of row 3 by 3, and then subtract those two answers. Let me document that. So for row 1, 5 times row 1 minus 3 times row 3. To make this 1 into a 0, row 2 this time, I'll multiply all of row 2 by 5 and minus row 3. So 5 times row 2 minus row 3. And lastly, to make row 4, specifically this negative 27 into a 0, I'll multiply all of row 3 by 27 and all of row 4 by a factor of 5 and add those two up. Now if you do this correctly, your brand new matrix should look like this. Notice in our brand new matrix, row 3 has not changed. It's virtually the same as before, but rows 1, 2, and 4 have. Take a look again at row 4, the objective function. You once again have to look for the most negative number, and in our case this time is negative 39. So this will be our pivot column. Remember this is x sub 1 all the way through z and our constant. We'll take our constant, 60 divided by 11, 35 divided by 12, 25 divided by 3, and you'll look for the smallest quotient. Dividing 60 by 11 should give you, this is our quotient column, approximately 5.4. Dividing 35 by 12 gives you approximately 2.9. And 25 divided by 3 is around 8.3. The smallest of these numbers is 2.9. So this right here is our new pivot number, and we need to make this 11, 3, and negative 39 into zeros. So how do we do that? Let's start with row 1. How can I make this 11 into a 0? What I can do is multiply all of row 1 by 12 and minus 11 times row 2. So let me document that. For row 1, 12 times row 1 minus 11 times row 2. For row 3, I can multiply all of this by a factor of 4 and then subtract that from row 2. So row 2 is r2 minus 4 times r3. To make this into a 0, I'll multiply all of row 2 by 39 and then add it to 12 times row 4. If you perform these calculations correctly, your new matrix should look like this. Take a look at the objective row, the objective function, and there are no more negative numbers. That means you can stop it and you can start to answer the question. And here's how to do that. Notice that in this row we have one number and everything else is a zero. So this will serve as one of our basic solutions. The same pattern applies here, the same pattern here, and the same pattern here. Let's start with the first column. We have 12, x sub 1 is equal to 35. This means x sub 1, if we solve for it, is around 2.9. For this column, we have negative 20, x sub 2 is equal to negative 65. If we solve for x sub 2, we end up with 3 and a quarter. Remember, this is one of our solutions. This is the other solution. Solving for s sub 1, we have 60, S sub 1 is equal to 355, 5.91. And the most important part of all, Z, 60 times Z is equal to 9465. Dividing both sides by 60 gives us 157.75. Therefore, our minimum here is being highlighted, and that happens when X1 is 2.9 and when X2 is 3.25. And there you have it. That is how to solve minimization problems via the simplex method using the theorem of duality.